gentlemen, welcome to live stream number 62. Today is Thursday. It is September 21st, 2017. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, to join today's live stream. Today, today's topic is how to model up a fan blade, so like the kind of fan blade that is inside of a computer that is one of your guys' request. And then uh, added like a little bit of uh, excitement uh, for your customers. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about parameters too. We're going to get into to that. See, we already got people jumping in. Really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your busy day to join the live stream. And if you're watching the recording on YouTube, hey, thank you so much for, uh, for, for watching that. That's the great thing about this, right? If you miss the live stream, it will be uploaded to YouTube also. Down in the description area. Of the uh, video, you will find my email address, lars.christensenautodesk.com. Thank you all of you guys who uh, are emailing me different suggestions. Today is one of those. Um, got a question, and I should be better at taking names so I can give credit. Thank you to whoever it was. About modeling up a, um, a fan for a, um, a computer, like a computer fan type. Uh, we did do an impeller uh, back at live stream number 34. Um, but there we used some splines, we used some sweeps. We're not going to do that today. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to use the loft. So we used the loft uh, earlier in the week when we modeled up, was it earlier this week or was it last week? Modeled up um, this little um, syrup add-on to water kind of thing. Uh, we're not going to use any rails today in the loft. We're going to show you something else cool. And what I did was I'm wearing my uh, Jimmy DeResta shirt today because what I wanted to do modeling up this fan is I want to kind of like take this, kind of like trying to show you how many times I approach stuff uh, when it comes to model something up like this. Because I think that that's, I think many people, well, I know for me, I learned a lot when I see other people model things up and kind of like see how they approach it. And that's what I'm going to, well, that's what I'm going to try to do today. So if you like the video, thumbs up. If you don't, hey, thumbs down. And if you haven't already, really appreciate your, uh, that you subscribe to the channel. All right, let's get, let's get, we have already got 28 people in here and we've only been on for two minutes. Let's get into Fusion 360. That's where you guys want to see me be anyways. All right, so. Computer fan blade. Actually, I called it up on uh, Google here. Did a little computer fan thing. So model something like up like this. And I'm assuming the case is fairly easy. It's more like the whole blade thing. So uh, let's go in and uh, do that in, uh, in Fusion 360. Model up a computer fan blade. At least how I would kind of uh, approach it. And just because, um, you know, why not making it in metric today? been using inches way too much. So we're going to switch over to millimeters. Don't forget, you can always switch over right over here. If you click that little triangle, go into units, you can change your units in there. All right. So like I said, um, you know, if your customer gave you a 2D print with all the dimensions on for this fan blade, it would be almost a little bit easier because at least now you had kind of like some things to tie down with. If you if you don't have uh, you know any dimensions and you kind of like gotta wing it and that's why I'm wearing my Jimmy DeResta shirt. If you don't know Jimmy DeResta, you should check out his YouTube channel. Absolutely love this guy. Um, he had a TV show and great great guy. But Jimmy does when it comes to making things. Why I absolutely think he's my hero is he just kind of like gets in there and start carving away at what he knows and then figure things out in the way. So. I know when I'm looking at this fan here, the easiest thing is probably doing the center. So let's just start with that. Um, so we get something on the screen. So I'm going to create a new sketch, pick a plane, doesn't really matter what. Hit C uh, for circle and draw up a circle here. And I'm going to make the center uh, 25 millimeters in diameter. And uh, then I'm going to extrude that. Uh, so at least we get something on the screen here and I'm gonna make that 25 also not really Not really important. All right, so we kind of like got this center down now when we when we're looking at a fan blade You know, what do we know? We kind of know that the, the two are offset from one another. There's kind of like a front and then there is a back 
Um, so let's start modeling that out. So I'm going to go ahead here on this front face and start a new sketch. So just right click, create new sketch. And uh, I'm going to sketch out some geometry. Actually, I'm going to do a center. And I'm going to make this, I know I want to make the fan like 80. I, I looked up that computer fans, some computer fans are like 80 millimeters in diameter. So I'm actually going to make this one a little bit bigger. So I'm going to make it 90. You will see a little bit down the road why. Um, and then I'm going to sketch out kind of, I know that, like I said, the front of it is kind of like in one angle and the back is in another angle. So alpha line. And I'm just going to sketch out some construction lines here. So one construction line like that and we're going to turn into construction in a second and then i'm going to kind of like this is going to be the first blade i'm going to model up here like that go up there and let me just hit escape to get out of the command let me get this 90 degree dimension out of the way um so now i'm going to make this one hit x for construction line highlight this line and x for construction line you will see just in a second now, I know that I want to control maybe the angle of the blades here. So I'm going to give it a D for dimension. And um, it's close to 30, so let's make it 30. All right. So this is kind of like one fan end's going to be here and the, and the other one's going to be here. So now I'm going to start drawing up kind of like the fan blade. And when I draw things up, I have a tendency to kind of like not trying to be too exact. So I'm just going to make sure it's line snaps in here, sketch a line up here, and I'm going to do one about the other side on here. Now I know that this is not not really a fan blade yet, but that's why I like to use the constraints to kind of tying things down. So uh, these two lines are probably going to be equal of one another. So I'm going to click on the equal sign, make them equal. Uh, they're probably also going to be parallel, equal and parallel. Okay, like that. And then I'm going to use one of my favorite uh, constraints it's called symmetry. So symmetry, click that, and I'm selecting one point, another point, and then this construction line. And now they're right between that line. They will work um, right between that center line. So now I can give it a, a width for this first fan blade. So I'm going to hit D and... Let's make this one millimeter thick, okay? And I honestly don't know why it's still blue. Now, the way to test if you have something that is um, fully constrained is grabbing an endpoint, but I would think that this one here should actually be fully constrained with those. It looks like it's fully constrained. I can't move anything. All right, uh, maybe I'm missing something, but um, it, as long as you can't move the endpoint, it's fine. So this is kind of like my my first blade here. Um, so I'm going to use a loft. So I'm going to have two sketches. So this is going to be the kind of like the first start of this. So let's stop this sketch here. And uh, then I'm going to start another sketch on the back where kind of like the blade ends. So I'm going to right click over here and create that. So now I'm kind of like looking from the back side up at this. Now, one thing you will notice is that if I start, so I'm going to kind of like create the horizontal fan blade. So if I create a line from here, you will see that I can't snap to that circle I could before. That's because that belongs to the first sketch. You will see that now we're working on the second sketch. So I'm actually going to hit P for project. Um, and if you watched the video with the shortcuts earlier in the week, um, you will, you will learn a little bit about that. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of copying uh, that circle I created 90 degrees before uh, over to this sketch. And I'm also going to take that center line right there. Grab those two. So now you will see when I hit alpha line that I can actually snap these lines to this intersection. So I just kind of like borrowed that other sketch. And again, notice how I'm sketching like in angles. I'm not even trying to get it perfect because... You know, I'm going to use these constraints for that. So I'm going to pretty much do the same thing as I did before. Like I said, I think I made them equal to one another. Yep. And we made them parallel to one another. So this is kind of like how these strain constraint comes in here. And then, like I said, my favorite is the symmetry down here. So I'm going to select the two endpoints. And then the line I want them to be symmetrical about. Okay. 
Now, then I want to show you something that I think you're going to really like. Uh, so now I'm ready to apply this uh, dimension here, right? What was one millimeter in, in width here. Uh, but here's a cool trick. If I go up to uh, up here to the left and I click on the little arrow next here, um, we had that first, well, the second sketch. The first sketch was the one that did the center where then we extruded out. That's what we have down here. The second sketch uh, up here, sketch number two, is the one where we kind of like made this fan at an angle. If I right click on that, if I right click on that, oh, it escaped. Right click, I had to get out of the constraint. <laughs> right click on that. See here where it says show, show dimension. If I click on that, see how it now is showing the dimensions from that first sketch? Here's a cool thing. If I do D for dimension, and I dimension this for this uh, fan width, when I place the dimension, instead of typing in one millimeter, if I click on this first dimension up here, See how it says D6? That is actually the secret code <laughs> for this dimension. Check this out. I'm going to hit enter to take it. Now you will see on that dimension, there's an FX1. What this means is that right now, if I change this dimension, it will change this thickness of, uh, of this line. So I'll go out in the sketch. Let's change this to three millimeters. As soon as I hit enter, you will see this line changes too. Right, so that first dimension is driving um, the second dimension because I know that these I, I, the fan blade will always have the same thickness around here. So that's a neat little trick. So to display the dimension, you right click on a dimension over here in the left, and you can either hide it or you can show it, whatever you want. And then when you place the dimension. Let's go back in and enter that sketch. Let me delete the dimension again. So now it's like it was deleted. When you when you go in here, hit D for dimension, but it's just a normal dimension tool. Select the, where you want the dimension to be, place it, but instead of typing anything in, go up and click on that uh, dimension up there and hit enter. And those two are now tied together. Now, for some reason, this don't get fully defined either. I'm not quite sure, I'm not gonna bother. Um, it should be completely locked down. Yeah, I'm not sure. So um, now what we can do, so when we did the impeller um, a, a, a few, well, a while back, live stream over 34, we used the sweep command to kind of like create uh, these shapes. And this one here, we're gonna use the loft. And we used the loft the other day to do that bottle, but I'll show you something else that was really cool with the loft. So I'm gonna click the loft, and I'm gonna select the two profiles. What is this one? And then our other profile in here. I gotta select that in two places right there. And let me just hit okay. Oh, it comes in as, make sure you look over here in the menu. See how we wanna cut? It actually sees that it's cutting into here. I'm gonna make that a join so it just becomes a blade. I hope that makes sense. Hit okay. And here, whoops, here we have, well, kind of a blade, right? It's not too shabby, I think. Now check this out. Go on to the right view over here. Let's go back in and look at uh, at this um, loft again. So when we've used the loft in before, we have been using, just clicking the two profiles, then we used the rails, or what I call guide curves, uh, to kind of like pull, if you look at, at, at that uh, live stream where we did the bottom, we kind of like pulled the solid. Well, I talked a little bit about it before. Up here, we have a couple of different options. There's one that is free, that's what it defaults to. But look what happens to the blade if I change if I change it to direction. Three, two, one. Whoa, do you see that? Let me change it back to free. See how in free states, it goes literally the shortest distance from one profile to the other profile. In direction, it actually pulls in a direction, and I can actually control that direction right here on an arrow, all down here in a what is called a takeoff weight. I don't know what it means with weight, but um, I could lose a few. Uh, so, see what I can do here? I can literally completely change the shape of this blade here and give it more curve. And then you're like, 
well, wait a minute, you can do, right now you're pulling kind of like at the top of the blade. What about the bottom of the blade? Yeah, going <laughs> in that direction. This is what excites me about uh, Fusion. And look at this, I can do the same thing on the bottom. So no matter which one I'm clicking on, I actually now have an input dimension to control uh, this blade. And I can kind of like do whatever I want. It defaults to one, what actually probably looks pretty good right here. Now also be aware of there is a takeoff angle down here and you can actually play a little bit with the two. Now you can't go too crazy. If you go too high, uh, it can't solve. But I like, I go like five maybe. You should see this change up here. See how it kind of like changes the shape a little bit. Maybe you have to play that with it yourself. But you're actually kind of like changing the angle of that, uh, of that sweep. So now when I hit OK, you will actually see by using that direction option, that looks like a pretty sweet fan blade to me without having any like um, crazy kind of, uh, I don't know, dimensions that I that I have to follow. I'm kind of like free forming. I'm, I'm the rest of here making it, making it happen as we go. So there's a fan blade. Pretty cool. Now, uh, a couple of things we could do here uh, I might want to, we talked about simulation yesterday, so if I go add a fillet, hit F for fillet, we might want to add um, a couple of fillets to this one. I'm going to keep them relatively small, make it two, um, and then we could, now we could revolve this around, right? So if we look back at our picture again, you will see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these comes normal with seven blades on them. And I'm wondering if that has something to do with, uh, like, an, I wonder if a uneven number is better, but whatever. Um, let's go into uh, to the create workspace, go to pattern, go to circular pattern. And uh, you know that I like to use the feature thing here. So let's try that. Select the loft, let's select the, the um, the fillet, select what axis we want to rotate around. We can select this outer edge here. And by default, it gives a three. So I'm going to change that to seven. And let's hit OK. And just like that, we, uh, we have a seven fan blade. Now, I realize that most fan blades kind of like have a radius on top. When you're looking at them, they're not flat. Right now, it's kind of like flat. So let's do something about that. Um, I'm going to go in here, right click, create sketch, hit C for circle, and uh, I'm going to make this, I said that one was going to make it 80. So there's an 80 degree or an 80 diameter circle. And then I'm actually, to get rid of all the stuff above it, um, you know, I always thought that this was a little bit like cheating, but you know what? It's actually probably the easiest way to do it is just to make two circles and then do Q, press pull and select uh, what you want to remove. What's well, gonna be all this plus all the segments in between here. I feel like, I feel like a little bit. There's another way you could do this. You could extrude a, a surface and you could do kind of like split body, but this is probably the quickest way to ever do this. And let's just drag it backwards. Let's do it through all, the extent to all. So. No matter how thick we made the blade, it will always uh, will always cut that through there. So now we have, uh, I think we have a pretty pretty sweet uh, blade here. One other thing I probably want to show you too while we add it is we can actually we can also fill it if we just want to fill it every edge. If we do F for fill it again, um, and if you go into your selection up here, and I hope I'm not moving too fast. Um, but I really want to go in and show parameters. If you go down to selection filters down here, if you make sure you have select through and I just window everything, if you don't have select through, not select on the back side, but now I select every single edge and I'm just going to give it like a small edge break here, just like something like that. And you now have every edge is kind of like have a little bit of a fillet on it. All right, I'm going to go this as being as far as I want to go on my fan blade here, I think. Uh, so pretty cool. Now, 
here comes where <laughs> we want to excite our customers. Um, this is actually a trick that goes way back that, that so I, I call this my Duresta style. I kind of like just kind of winged my way, thought about how, what do I know? I know the inside diameter. I know kind of like these two fan blades are kind of like offset. So let me just create a loft between that and then pull in and there we go. It's pretty, I think that's a pretty good uh, fan blade right there. Um, but then what if you got to present this in front of the customers? And I think this is a really uh, neat trick um, because when when you go in front of a customer and you present them something that they want or your boss or whatever it is, I don't think I've ever modeled anything up in any CAD software and somebody was not like, hmm, well, that looks good, but what if we did this instead? What if it was red? What if it was longer? And you always have to then scramble back and kind of like... Um, Kind of like, you know, trying to go in and make edits. Many times what I used to do was be like, okay, you know, give me a half an hour and I'll be right back. And I would go back, make the changes, come back again and kind of like present it again. Well, here's a neat trick to maybe impress them, uh, the boss or the customer, uh, and make your life easier. So, as you're finishing your fan and you're sitting here, then just take two seconds and ask yourself, all right, when I go in and ask this guy, if this is all he needs, um, then uh, <laughs> then uh, then he's gonna change some things. What are the things that he would uh, that he would like to see change? And uh, well, this is where parameters are absolutely awesome. Now parameters are sitting right uh, down here, and I did do a. Uh, a live stream on it so you can definitely check uh, check it out so hit change parameters and it comes in here with uh, the different parameters now what you can do in here down in the model parameters you will see every single thing that you had uh, going on uh, in here um, with uh, with all the sketches all the dimensions but what you can do up here is you can create user parameters so I'm gonna go in here and click on this and it's going to come up with uh, a value. And uh, what are some of the things that the customer might come back or the boss might come back with? Well, I changed that uh, thickness of the, of the, wow, I can't speak English. Uh, the, the fin thickness. <laughs> Hopefully I can type it better. So fin thickness. That's hard for me to say. Uh, and... Uh, I'm just going to put a value in here right now that is the same as what we modeled it up as, what was one, uh, one unit millimeter. Um, then he's going to come and say, well, okay, well, what about, um, what about maybe a fan, you know, the numbers of blades. So number of blades. Now, this is not going to be a unit, this is actually going to be a no unit, right? So, so this was, it is in millimeters. I'm just gonna say it's a no unit and we put in seven uh, of these here. And then let me show you another little trick, uh, what you can do. So let me just, this is, will be remembered. Let's just go out here. Uh, I'm actually gonna go in here and this is something I saw somebody do one time. Uh, I'm gonna go in and add a scale factor to this model. I'm going to select the model that's what I want to scale, but I'm actually not going to add anything into it. It's just going to sit down there in the tree. Now, when I go back into my parameters, I am going to create one that I'm going to call fan size. That is not going to be a, uh, a unit either. It's going to be a no unit. And I'm just going to leave it at one scale factor of one. Now with these in here, here comes the magic. Let's go and find that uh, thin thickness parameters we created. So I sketched out the center, extruded that out. So it's in here in sketch number two. You will see that right down here, there's a linear dimension, there's that D6. Now that is right now one millimeters. I'm gonna change that to the username thin, thin thickness. And I'm just gonna start typing and you will see that they show up here. So I'm gonna change that hit enter. That means that now this D6 is controlled by this value up here. Same thing if I go down to the pattern we did, open that one up, 
Here's the, no the D7 that controls how many blades. Well, that's what we want this one to be. So click here, start typing in NU, there's number of blades, hit enter. And then the last one I did was this scale factor. So let's go in and change that one to be fan size. Okay. So you do that and let's just turn this one, hit the little so it disappears. And you could actually also, if you just really want to, go to, to, to uh, the modify. And if you click that little arrow next to, to the parameter, it's going to bring it up on the toolbar. So now you don't have to go so far. So here's the idea. Uh, you are in front of uh, the customer and or the boss, and they're looking at this and they're like, yeah, that's all great. Um, what if we made the blades thicker? And instead of you have to now go in and play around, now if, you know, we know that this sketch is actually controlling that. Um, and we have this as, as ones. We know we can go in and change. Uh, well, it's actually the other sketch that's controlling it because this is copying it, right? This sketch here. Well, whatever. Uh, now we can just hit the change parameter. We can go right in here and say, well, what do you want it to be? You want it to be three? Change that to three. I might run into an issue with the fillers now. I don't know. Hit OK. It's going to compute. And now we will see that the blade got thicker. Let's try to go. We can make them two. Right? So right here in front of the bars, you can be like, oh, OK, you want them two? All right, well, let me just change them to two. The same thing about the number of blades. So they're like, well, we really thought that it should have nine blades. Hit Enter and uh, it will compute it with nine blades. Um, so this gives you, and now we get a fillet error because it became too big. So of course the fillets uh, might interfere a little bit with this. You could actually probably go in here and do like a real formula that would change the fillet also. I'm not gonna do that right now. So let's go down to five fans, blades, and it will change it to, uh, to five uh, blades in here. And then of course, uh, the, the last one I did was the scaling. What if they have different sizes uh, of fans, right? So if we go in here, we can scale it by three times just by uh, typing uh, that value uh, in there. So I'm coming up on um, coming up on the 30 minutes here, and I wanted to keep it at 30 minutes. Now I still get a an issue here with a filler down here. Let's go in. Look at if you if you ever get these yellow ones down here, right click and say review warning and it should come up here and give us that there's a reference as they were lost and that's because I was changing uh, to the different blade size so that's one thing about this idea the the fillets could become a little bit of an issue if I go back to seven what we originated from then you will see that it goes away so that's you know you probably had to do something maybe a little bit different uh in here the way i build it but i hope this uh was was kind of helpful um got 90 people in here which is absolutely awesome i really appreciate you taking the time out of your thursday to uh to to join these live streams i hope you get something something out of this so this was a little bit of a model experience uh so go back and check out number 34 where we did uh, the impeller the kind of like the turbo impeller style um, with that one, we used the sweep command and we had kind of like a guide curve or rail. If you look at the one that earlier in the week with a little uh, bottle kind of thing, we used lost like we did here uh, with, uh, with rails. But here, that direction thing is, is pretty cool. I hope you got something out of this. I'm going to do what I normally do. I'm going to end the... Pro oh, by, by the way, tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday. Tomorrow is camp. Same time, but tomorrow is camp. And... Um, if you follow this channel, you know that uh, the development team did some stuff with turning um, recently. And you know what? I honestly think that turning don't get the attention it should. So tomorrow we're going to do some uh, some turning inside of Cam, with Cam inside of Fusion 360. That's tomorrow's topic. I'm going to do what I normally do. I'm going to end the broadcast. So if you're watching this as a recording, I really appreciate you taking the time out to watch this. I hope you get something out of this. And then I'm going to jump into uh, the live stream and say hi to everybody. So until tomorrow, have an awesome, awesome day. Thank you.